Yeah. I mean, do you think that helps though? Do you think that kind of being diverse and experimenting with different styles helps you as a producer, helps you improve? I mean... Def- it definitely has for me. I mean, because I like listening to all sorts of different things, I I try to reference a lot of tracks and learn, just learn making particular sounds. And I think trying to learn different styles, just you can't help but become a more you know, comprehensive and able producer by having such a diverse range. I think, um, I think you have to be open to, to different styles if you really want to become a, a well-rounded producer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I tell this to everyone, but they always, not always, <laughs> some people say, yeah, but then how do I market myself? I mean, I know this isn't a production um, question, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't, it's, yeah, no, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I, I don't think you need to make one style. I, I think it's probably better to focus in on a particular style to market yourself. But you've got people mm-hmm. like Matt Zo, um, I mean, yeah. even above and beyond, you know, yeah. what I think Tri-State, that's not a, it's not a trance track. It's like an, you know, a chilled out <laughs> piano piece. Yeah, So, definitely. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, I... It is. It does make marketing difficult. Um, I think. I think they all have some some consistencies. I mean, uh, for instance, with with me, I mean, it's gonna be kind of. It's, it'll always be progressive trance, but you're never quite sure. It's not necessarily gonna be like a big room sound, or it might be a bit more laid back. Like you're never quite sure what it's gonna be. Um, so there are some consistencies and I think people know to expect um, a bit more substance from my tracks because I like to put a, a lot of emotion in. Even, even if I'm going for like a big club track, I mm. still try and get a lot of substance into it. Um, so there are some consistencies there and I, and I think other artists are the same way. I mean, with Matt Zo these days, you know it's going to be creative, you know it's going to be this yeah. crazy production, you know it's going to be cool. Um, and that's what I, I think I mean, Matt Zo is you expect cool. So you, yeah. you're going to listen to his stuff, you know, <laughs> and above and beyond you expect something kind of, um, deep and emotional. Um, mm. and at the same time, you know, they can do like the big clubby things and I don't know. Um, so that there are some consistencies there. Um, even though they're all a little bit different. And I, I wonder if that's something that comes, uh, only with years of practice and developing kind of a, not not so much a signature sound but a series of you know you've got all these influences coming in and you do certain things in a certain way you pick certain samples which means that kind of no matter what style you make there are going to be some consistencies and some similar sounds you use like i know with matt so um -hmm. he's got kind of a it's not really a signature pluck because it always sounds a little bit different but you can tell when you hear yeah. it, that it's mad. So, and even his composition style. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Same with someone like Artie, I think. I mean, he's kind of played around a bit with, with different genres, yeah, but, yeah. you know, you can still, you, you recognize the chords. You, you would or the still recognize style. it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's, I don't know what it is, whether it is just particular, like like you said, it's particular sounds that the that draw those producers in. Like, I will go for sounds that I find interesting and, I guess other people just pick up on that, like, oh yeah, this you can tell it's a grander track, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is that they can hear something that we don't necessarily notice we're doing ourselves. 